Good morning, everybody. How you guys doing? Welcome to the Revolution Church. Uh, my name is Caleb or Pastor Caleb. You can call me either one of those. We are really excited that you guys are here this morning. Uh, we're going to be diving into things. And if you guys could do me a favor and let's just start off this morning standing up. Just to give you guys an idea of how we operate, we got this awesome open space up here for anyone to come up and worship. We have some flags for the adult streamers, for the kids. Uh, parents, just make sure your kids are not beating anyone up with the streamers um, and or flags. Um, we are really excited about this morning. We're going to be diving into some worship. There's a few things that I felt like um, we should do before we jump into worship. Are you guys ready for it? Okay, so number one, this might get a little crazy, so we got to do this quickly. I felt like you're supposed to find someone and either give them a hug if you're comfortable with that, and if you're not, give them an awesome, amazing handshake. So find someone and just give them a handshake or a hug real quick. Greet someone around you. Listen to that, you guys were so quiet, and all of a sudden it was like children playing. All right, guys, let's go ahead and reel it back in. You guys did amazing with that. Go ahead and make your way back to the seat. Good job. So before we dive into worship, um, I just felt like God was bringing to my mind like what an idol is. Like, when we think about idols, you know, especially in the Bible, we think about like an image and someone worshiping a false god. But did you know that an idol is anything that you give power above than the name of Jesus? So that could be fear. That could be the, the, the love of money. That could be video games. It's anything that is more, it could be sickness. It could be sickness. Your sickness is more powerful than the name of Jesus. And not in a shameful way, but we are to have no more or no idols except the only person that we're supposed to worship is Jesus. Amen is right. And the cool thing is, is there's power in the name of Jesus. When we worship, chains fall off. Chains fall off. Those idols, they fall off. They all of a sudden they lose power. So I encourage you guys as we dive into worship today to go ahead and worship and know that the, that the name of Jesus is just not a name, but it's power, it's freedom, it's love. It's every single need that you would possibly need. So I'm going to go ahead and open in prayer and then we will dive right in. Are you guys ready? Yeah. So Jesus, I thank you that there are no idols in this house that we are an idol-free house and we will worship the name of Jesus with reckless abandonment, that we are gonna worship with our lives, with our hearts, God, that we are not gonna hold back anything from you, that we will not make anything an idol in our lives, not what people think, not fear, not sickness, and I thank you, God, that this morning you're gonna break those chains. In Jesus' name we said, amen. amen. So if you're an upfront person, just come on up front. Why don't you just close your eyes and focus yourself? I know I need to. I've been running around like crazy. Him up in your own words.
you up. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 oh. Every voice, remember we talked about it, doesn't matter what you sound like, every one of you have a voice. Everyone lift this up. You guys are tapping into something. Joining in with all of heaven.
I don't want to move from the spot. There's something happening. I just want to invite you to just pay attention how your body feels, how your mind feels. You, Jesus. You are the of it all. We invite you, Father God. We invite you, Holy Spirit. Trust in our God and through his unfailing love we will not be shaken we will not be shaken we will not be shaken for we trust we trust in our God through his unfailing love, we will not be shaken, we will not be shaken, we will not be shaken, though the battle, though the battle rages, we will stand in the fight. Though the armies rise up against us on all sides. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. Let's do that again. Though the battle rages, we will stand in the fight. Though the armies rise up against us on all sides, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. For in the hour. For in the hour of our darkest day. We won't tremble. We won't be afraid. Hope is rising like the light of dawn. For us, he has overcome. For we trust in our God. Through his unfailing love, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. For we trust. unfailing love we will not be shaken we will not be shaken we will not be shaken all those against them
foes against him will fall For our God is stronger But he can do all things No higher name we can call For Jesus is greater He can do all things All those All those who against him will fall for our God is stronger, He can do all things. No higher name we can call, for Jesus is greater, we can do all things. All those who against Him will fall, for our God is stronger. Jesus is greater, we can do all things. For we trust in our God, and through His unfailing love, we will not be shaken, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken, for we trust. For we trust in our God. And through His unfailing love, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. All those, those against him will fall. Our God is strong. He can do all things. No higher name we can call. Jesus is greater. He can do all things. All those, all those against Him will fall. For our God is stronger. He can do all things. No higher. No higher name we can call. Jesus is greater. He can do all things. is greater he can do all things for we trust for we trust in our God and through his unfailing love we will not be shaken we will not be shaken we will not be shaken. We trust in our God. And through His unfailing love, we will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. For we trust.
not be shaken We will not be shaken We will not be shaken You're okay We will not be shaken check, check. So when we were singing that We will not be shaken part I got this really cool vision This is super dorky But Alex and I We watch Naruto And anybody who watches Naruto Knows that Naruto Whenever he says something That he really believes He says believe it And whenever he says that Alex and I go like this and I just saw while we were singing the will, we will not be shaken part, everybody was going like this because we really believe that part. And I feel like when we sing that, sometimes it's hard to believe because we have been shaken. Things happen and life feels like it gets shaky. But the point is that we're trusting in God that we will not be shaken. The reason we're not shaken is because of him. And when we say that, we have to actually believe it. And, and I feel like we actually need to do the believe it thing with our fists when we sing it because it's a real deep thing that we need to believe deep down. We will not be shaken. 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 No, no, no. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken. We will not be shaken For we trust For we trust in our God And through His unfailing love We will not be shaken We will not be shaken I will not be shaken erupt with praise can you hear it? the sound of heaven touching earth the sound of heaven touching earth our father all of heaven roars your name sing louder Touching earth, our Father, 
All of heaven roars your name. Sing louder. Let this place erupt with praise. Can you hear it? The sound of heaven touching earth. Sound of heaven touching earth. Oh. Oh. oh, Spirit break out. Break our walls down. Spirit break out Heaven come down Spirit break out Break our walls down Spirit break out Break my walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Spirit break out Break our walls down Heaven come down Heaven come down King Jesus King Jesus You're the name we're lifting high Your glory Shaking up the earth and skies Revival Wanna see your kingdom here We want to see your kingdom here King Jesus You're the name we're lifting high Your glory Shaking up the earth and sky Revival Wanna see your kingdom here We wanna see your kingdom here Spirit break out Break our walls down
We're going to do the verse, King Jesus. We're going to end on this. We're going to do it a couple times. And we're going to wrap it up. I love, this is my favorite part of the song. Because it talks about revival and wanting to see his kingdom here. And so when we sing that, we're actually asking for it. We're asking for his glory to shake the earth. We're asking for revival to come, to see his kingdom right now, right here. Because that's available to us. And like we talked about last week with our voices, every single one of you have a voice that shakes in the spirit. You have a victory, you have an identity and a purpose. And so you don't want to miss out on this. I want you guys to stand up. And I want you to use your voice. I want you to use your spirit from the bottom of your belly. Even if you don't feel it, if you don't feel like it, if you think we're crazy and you're annoyed that this song is going, you're the person that's supposed to stand up. So I want us to keep going into this and sing this with truth, with identity, with power, with authority, not coming Jesus, we we be done. This is the God of all of heaven and we're spending a whole 45 minutes. So let's get excited. We should wanna do this forever. Your the name we're lifting high, your glory shaking up the earth and sky, revival. Wanna see your kingdom here? Come on, declare it. We wanna see your kingdom here, King Jesus. Your the name we're lifting high. earth and skies revival wanna see your kingdom here come on we wanna see your kingdom here 
King Jesus, you're the name we're lifted high, your glory, shaking up the earth and skies, revival, we want to see your kingdom here, let's do it again. We want to see your kingdom here, King Jesus, your name will lift it high, your glory, shaking up the earth and skies, revival, we want to see your kingdom here. Last time, let's really go for it, declare this, come on guys. You're the name we're lifting high, your glory, shaking up the earth and skies, revival, we want to see your kingdom here, we want to see your kingdom here, spirit break out. Break our walls down, down, down. Spirit, break out. Heaven, come down. Let it come, let it come. Spirit, break out. Break our walls down. Heaven come down Spirit break out Break the walls down Spirit break out Heaven come down Yes, Jesus is good. Let's give him a round of applause. You know, sometimes we have this really weird perception of God. And when we find out God is real, we think that sometimes all he is is someone that's going to miraculously do something every moment of our life. And sometimes God does that. Sometimes things are miraculous. People are addicted and all of a sudden they're not. Sometimes people need a miracle in their body. Sometimes there's a financial miracle. But did you also know that it would be really weird if I had a kid and at 30 years old I was still changing its diaper, I was making its food, I was buying them a car, I was doing all these things. And so we as sons and daughters were like, God, why, why, why? And he's like, I don't want to change your diapers anymore. I want to show you how to go and make enough money to buy the car. I want to show you how to go and do it yourself because God's a good dad and he doesn't want to treat you like the baby the rest of your life. So we need to switch the way that we're thinking and God's like, hey, I don't just want to do everything for you. I want to show you how to do it so you can step into maturity. God, oh, help me, help me. He's like, yes, let me show you how to help yourself. We have to change from thinking like victims to thinking like victors. That was a good word right there. So we're going to transition into another form of worship. Hold off on getting up and also taking your kids out to kids' church. Uh, we're going to switch to tithes and offering. Uh, Sierra is going to be to my right because she is the most amazing card reader ever. Um, but here at the Revolution Church, uh, if this is not your home church, we ask that your offering goes to your home church. I'm sorry, your tithe goes to your home church. 
But if you would like to make an offering, you're absolutely welcome to do that. We have buckets up here, cash uh, or check that you can bring up. We actually have you come up here to my right. Your guys' left, we have Sierra doing the card reader. I'm going to go ahead and pray, and then we're going to invite you guys to come forward and give your tithe. So Jesus, we just thank you so much that we get to sow in financially into your kingdom. And God, I thank you that we be we can be victorious in the way that we do it. We will not be victims in the way that we sow, but we will be victors. So I thank you, God, that we will come in here with the right heart, with the pure heart and pure motives, not twisting anything before you. And God, we just love you, we honor you, and we worship you with our lives and even our money we give to you. In Jesus' name, we all said, all right, go ahead and come forward. So our kids check in. Lady went back there a little bit too early um, because we don't know if we are having a nursery because we've had two people call out on us sick and then two elementary people sick as well. We have like four people puking this morning. No bueno. So is anyone available to help in nursery today? Sweet. Sierra is going to do it. Thank you. All right. Now you guys are free to check kids in. Thank you.
Hey guys, how you doing? Good, good to see you guys. We're probably a little hot, Andy. You guys can write that on your little bingo sheet. If you don't know what I'm talking about, so we have a, uh, like we have a worship team, we have a prophetic team, and if we uh, do conferences or something at other places, we'll take them, and um, for my birthday slash pastor appreciation, they were playing word bingo with the things that Jason says. And so that would have been a phrase that I was all excited thinking people were like when they get bingo, they would stand up and say, amen, hallelujah. And I was like, man, I'm giving a great message today. This is so cool. And they were just playing games the whole time. <laughs> but you were listening. Yes. Amen. 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 Glory. <laughs> So uh, this was found out in the parking lot last weekend, and uh, so if somebody is missing their teddy bear, you are. Excellent. Oh. We've been keeping them safe all week. Hey. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay, I got to run through announcements really quick, and we actually have a ton of announcements, so I'm going to try and do this super fast, although we're doing great on time. Um, if you guys don't know this, uh, Revolution Church has an app, uh, iRev, p and either store, Google or Android. We settled that. We just did both. And... Um, and so anyway, uh, things we have going on, if you go to uh, download our app, it'll have everything there. But the big things I want to hit on is uh, November 29th, we have our Christmas decoration party that we're doing in here. It's at 7 p.m. Uh, we're going to hang some lights and do some crafts and, and that kind of stuff. And yeah, come after your Black Friday shopping. Um, that's what Ronnie said. It was my wife, not me. Uh, anyway, uh, that's November 29th, and that'll be at 7 p.m. here. It's always a great time of community. We just hang out, and uh, we make a big mess. It's pretty awesome. Uh, then we have the commission on the 30th downstairs in the furthest classroom, basically right over here, uh, but downstairs. Uh, we're going to be doing multiple things on Saturday, so I just want to make sure that the commission is going downstairs in the corner there. Uh, we're actually having a memorial service upstairs, so we want to honor them and, and, and that type of deal. So anyway, but the commission is going to be putting together uh, packets to hand out to the homeless. So it'll be like socks, hand warmers, toothbrushes, toothpaste, that kind of stuff. Talk to Pastor Caleb about all the details. And then December 1st, which I think is actually next weekend. Yeah. Yeah, next Can you guys believe this? Right? So next weekend is a thing we like to affectionately call snack chat. Right? And so, uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we, some of you millennials will totally recognize that, but we redeemed it and put holy there. So anyway, uh, snack chat is a time for you to hang out with our pastoral staff. If you're new around here, if you've been, we say if, if you've been coming here like three months or less, uh, we meet in this room right back here. We have hors d'oeuvres and that type of thing after church. You can ask us questions about our wives and we'll answer all of them. Uh, if you have any type of theological question, you can ask that. You know, just church history, that type of deal. Uh, and we'll have all of our pastors there. So it's a great time to just hang out a little bit more than what we can do other times. So, And there are little card reminders in the foyer on the business card section over there. Does that make sense? You guys good? Okay, one more announcement, and this is a biggie because it's only two weeks away, basically. Uh, December 6th at 7 p.m., 
our whatever annual tree lighting that we're doing. We're getting a big Christmas tree today after church. Um, those, some of you guys are going with Darren after church. You guys are going to cut down a tree, bring it, plop it in there. This week we're going to put lights on it. <laughs> And uh, we're going to get everything ready for it. So that'll be the 6th at 7 p.m. And uh, we're going to have hot chocolate, cider. We'll do carols. And it's just a great community night. Okay. Oh, yeah. If somebody is like the uh, Christmas tree light decorator person, I love heights. And last year we rented a big lift. And I was literally like praying in tongues the whole way up. <laughs> And Capri, I actually made Caprice get in the bucket with me, and she was just laughing at me. And I'm just, she's like, you're really scared? And I'm like, oh, yeah, I hate this thing. And, uh, and then Jesse came with his drone, so I had to look all like I wasn't afraid. So if somebody wants to do that, <laughs> that would be great. All right, I don't know. Get a hold of me. All right, we got to move on. You guys ready? Got your Bibles? You guys got your Bibles out? Whew. Okay. Uh, really quickly, before I move on, uh, I just feel prompted to uh, give a, release a couple things and see what happens. Uh, is there anyone in here with right-sided neck pain? Right-sided neck pain? Okay, a couple of you. Why don't you guys stand up? And just stay standing. Um, right leg, either pain or tingling. Something going on with the right side right now. Yeah, you? Okay, so you got to hold both hands up. So, <laughs> all right. So, uh, so for the moment, everyone that's standing, please put your hand up in the air and keep it up until somebody comes to you to pray. Church, we're going to go to these people, and we're going to pray for them. We're going to release the kingdom of God over them, and we're going to see them get healed. So let's get up, and you guys can all do this. It's okay. Just do a quick interview and ask, hey, what's going on? What's wrong? And then let's just begin to uh, lay hands on that person with their permission and see what God does. Just really quick. Thank you, Jesus. So God, we thank you that you're revealing ailments. Lord, we thank you that you're healing them. We just command the pain, the tingling, the neck pain, the, the leg pain, the leg tingling to get out right now in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we thank you for total alignment right now. You just get healed. Right up front, we had a healing. Awesome. That's good. How are you guys doing over here? We feeling better? Way better? Awesome. We'll take it. Thank you, Jesus. That's so good. Okay, so uh, that was a really awkward, like, clap about Jesus healing somebody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Yay. He's not in pain. <laughs> Guys, we should be, I'm trying to make fun of it, you know, light of it, uh, but we should be absolutely excited about the things that God's doing in our midst, even if it's a headache, even if it's a toothache, whatever it is, man. If, he, if, if there's evidence of God on the move, we should be excited. Amen. Right, And uh, Pastor Cliff was just sharing a testimony this morning uh, uh, about a person that he got to pray for on the job that had cancer. And uh, they literally, he came to the job site and he came to give a bid for a job. And they said, you're the one. And he was like, what? And they were like, we, we felt like God told us that uh, he showed us a man that was going to pray for my wife and she's going to get healed of cancer. And it, they're like, it was you. <laughs> And so he prayed over her. She felt good, felt blessed, went to the doctor, and the doctor said, hey, I don't know what's going on, but you don't have cancer, right? And so it's good stuff, right? So that's, 
that's like seven or eight people in the last four months that have been healed uh, in our community. And this is just, this is super cool stuff. And so I get excited over like a headache being healed just as much as I do over cancer being healed, right? It's so exciting seeing someone get delivered uh, of, of uh, addiction or something like that. It is just an exciting thing. Yes. Amen? Yes. All right. Well, get your Bibles out. Go to the book of Matthew. Okay, I just heard two more things while you're going to the book of Matthew. Is there somebody in here, and and before you respond, listen to what I'm saying because it could sound bad. Is there somebody that is in here that is just desperate? And what I mean is, is you are literally, it's like, okay, God, you're, you're, you're totally being Princess Leia. And you're like, help me, Jesus, you're my only hope. It's like, this is like the last thing, right? Is that a couple of people? A couple of people in here. Awesome. Stand up. We're going to pray for you. Super cool. Hopefully the Star Wars analogy was okay. Yeah, let's, let's go to them right now. Let's just do it. This is church. So just ask them for permission. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just take a couple minutes and pray for them. Release a blessing. Let's do it, yeah. Thank you, Papa. Yeah, Jesus, we just thank you that you come in in the last moment. Lord, that you come in and you bring the breakthrough. And that today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of, of breakthrough. Thank you, Jesus. All right, guys, let's finish up. Good job. Hmm. For those of you that responded to that word just a moment ago, if you want to write down a scripture, Zechariah 9.12. For those of you that responded to the word desperate, Zechariah 9.12. Zechariah 9.12. This is what it says. Zechariah 9, 12 says, Return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Right? And and a couple of years ago, I I preached a message about this very verse. And and it was really kind of funny because I went and bought legit handcuffs. And before I found legit ones, I found illegitimate ones and whatnot. And (laughs) it was was a story. But anyway, uh, we... uh, We handcuffed somebody in the church, and we were like, get out of them. And she couldn't. She was trapped. She was stuck. She was a prisoner of hope, right? And that's that that hope that that God brings, that the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit brings, is that hope that we just can't get away from, right? So I just want to remind you to return to your stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today, I declare that I will restore double to you. For I have bent Judah my bow, fitted the bow of, with Ephraim, and raised up your sons. Right? This is, this is a great promise of the Lord. He's here fighting for you. Amen? Amen. All right. Okay, let's go to the real message. I felt we, we got, you know, we get here really early on Sundays and I really just had the, the distinct feeling that today was going to kind of get hijacked. 
and uh, I, I'm totally okay with it, and I hope you guys are too. So um, I do have a message planned, and I'm going to kind of roll with it, but if I get other instructions, I'm just going to deviate, and we're going to do it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And so, oh, man, Jesus. Let's go to Matthew 22. When you get there, give me an amen. amen. Matthew 22. It's not because we're religious. I just want to make sure I don't lose you guys. I used to hate it when I was in church and the pastor would call stuff out and I'm like still fumbling through, trying to figure out where I'm going. And, you know, and then by the time I get there, he's on to the next one. I don't, I don't want to leave anyone behind. Okay. So Matthew 22, we're going to get there in just a minute. Okay. So today I felt like uh, something that we needed to talk about goes in line with, what did, what did I speak on a couple of weeks ago? Identity, introductions, what was the overall theme? Loving God, right? Loving God. Loving God, loving people, pursuing his presence. And for the next several months, we're just talking about loving God. What does that look like to love God? So here's the thing. So what does it look like to love God? Or I just last week, I mean, we baptized, I think, five people. We had seven people give their life to the Lord. Great. You just met Jesus now what? What does loving God look like? Okay? Now, for those of you that didn't just receive Jesus last week, you're like, well, gosh, I mean, this is going to be just to those seven people or six people? No. The next part of it is, you know, what does it look like to love God when we've been a Christian for 25 years? What does it look like to be in love with God, loving him from the point of the very first introduction, the very first encounter to, man, I don't even remember that initial encounter. Is this making sense? So today I hope to just give a little bit of what it is like, what what are some characteristics of somebody that loves God at any stage of their relationship with Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right, so part of our mission here at the Revolution Church is to actually move you through a process, and we haven't always been good at this, and it's something that we're getting better at, right? And so when somebody new comes into the church, we actually have a process, right? And I see some of you are like, a process? What are you talking about, right? The process is, is we want to move you from a place of attending to a place of belonging, we want you to not just come here on your Sunday and be like, rah, 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 Jesus, rah, 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 and we want you to move from that place into, man, I belong here. This is my home, yeah. right? Uh, a pastor I used to be under, uh, Pastor Eric, we've had him out here uh, several times. He used to say, you know, he uses this tribe reference. I found my tribe. Right, and and he used to say that us in the vineyard, we all we all belong here because we don't belong anywhere else. We don't fit in anywhere else, right? And so there's this thing of of figuring out home. And so we want to move you from from just attending church to belonging and being the church. And that's why we're doing these things like snack chat and stuff, so you can ask us questions. Because the reality is, is it is scary to come into a new place. And then, in contrast, if you've been somewhere for a very long time, it's scary to be vulnerable. It's scary to be here and be the new person. And at the same time, it is scary to be here for years and years and then be vulnerable because people think a certain thing about you. And it's like, oh gosh, if you let somebody know that you don't know something or you're hurting, we have this thing in society that says, oh, 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 don't be real. They're going to think less of you. Man, that's just uh, not the way the kingdom works, right? You guys doing okay? All right, so our mission statement, loving God, loving people, pursuing his presence, okay? It's more than just a statement, more than just a, you know, cool phrase. It it is a ministry process, okay? Okay. And, and I don't want you to get afraid. What is he talking about? Processes and all this stuff. Oh, I just want to follow the Holy Spirit. Okay? Well, remember in the Old Testament that when the, the uh, blueprints 
for the ark of the covenant were given and for the temple. It was so when it was given to Moses. It was given so that the Holy Spirit would thrive and be able to dwell and remain there. Structure provides a safe place for the Holy Spirit to move. Now the thing is, is we just don't want to make our box so small. Yeah. Right? Okay, so don't be afraid of process. Do you guys know that love is a process? Yeah. Love is a process. When, when, you, when you love somebody, your love for that person, thank you. Pastor Caleb just got smacked. So uh, when, when you, let's say when you meet your wife the first day, she's not your wife, she's your girlfriend and she turns into your wife, there, there is a process of, of love that is expanding and expanding. And what you were willing to do or not willing to do the first day compared to what you were willing to do the day you were getting married and you saw her at the, at the aisle, whew, right? You're willing to do a lot more that day. Love is a process. And the whole thing is, 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 God the Father wants to teach us this process. He wants to teach us how to, to love him so much in a, such, in, in a pure way, an honoring way, that we might begin to learn how to love him appropriately. Right? He wants us to learn how to love him. And then the other cool thing is, is as we learn how to love him appropriately, we begin to love ourselves appropriately. Yeah. And the, the absence of self outside of your relationship with God, it, it, it just won't work. Okay, you do have to focus on you. And it sounds contra to kingdom to go, well, I'm just supposed to focus on Jesus. And that's just, that is part of it. But Father God created you, so he wants you to grow into the fullness and stature, so he gets his full reward. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, Whew. from singing and preaching, I am like, whoa. All right, so this is where Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven 37 comes in, Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven. 37. Here is, is, a, is a basic deal in scripture to teach us what it would look like to love God. Right, And so he's teaching us how to love the Godhead. <clears throat> so Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven 37 says this. Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. So we're going to read this really again, uh, really quick again. You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And so what we're going to do is we're going to break this down just a little bit, okay? You get, this, is, this is how I get revelation. Everyone's always like, ooh, how do you get revelation? Well, there's really no re new revelation. It's already all like right here, Right? And just as you grow in understanding and as you study the word, things begin to be revealed to you. That's why it's revelation, revelations. Okay, make sense? Yeah. All right, so, let's, so the first thing that catches my eye is you must. You must. Okay, so I, I have that circled and, and highlighted. The next thing is love the Lord. You must love the Lord. You must love the Lord. Okay? And then, with all is the next thing that kind of jumps off the page when I read it. With all. Next one, heart. That's the next thing that jumps out at me. Okay? Now, we're going to break these down. How many, how many of you love it when somebody says, you must do this, you have to do this? How many of you guys are like, yeah! <laughs> you must go clean your room. You must go wash the car. You must take the garbage out. We're just usually chomping at the bit, super excited. Yeah! You must pay your bills. <sighs> right? 
the interesting thing is, is you do word studies and you and read commentaries and really dive into the word, meaning the word of God, you'll find out that that must actually isn't in the Greek language, right? And, and it's not that this is bad or anything that it's in here. Uh, it, is, it is a word that we use in our English language to show importance, to put severity upon, to say, hey, this is an important thing. Right, and actually, if you were to read the Bible in Greek, you would literally sound like Yoda. It's the 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 sentences don't even they're they're basically backwards. It's very interesting, and whatnot. And so, must is actually not in the Greek text. However, we use it in our English language to show importance and duty. You guys, this is something that we should do. You know, for an example. If uh, you have a family member that went and bought you a brand new car, I mean, like top of the line, like thing, you would be like telling your wife, you know what, we, we probably need to go over for dinner on Sundays like we've been telling them, right? There's this sense of duty. There's this sense of obligation. Is this making sense? We must do this. This person poured out lavishly lavishly on us and we 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 must do this we we need to do this we need to show them we're not flakes somebody pays for your college tuition well i really need to graduate i really need to it's the same thing as saying i must graduate i must is this making sense to you okay so that's the first thing you know in an analogy would be in an airplane when you're flying, you should wear a seatbelt. Some of us that just got back from Africa a couple months ago, we, we were on a gazillion planes. I don't remember how many miles we traveled, something like 27,000 miles or something like that. And uh, we were in planes for days, literally, <laughs> right? And there were times where you didn't even know you were in the air. And there were other times where Ronnie is gripping my hand and just looking at me. <laughs> <We're gonna die. laughs> right? <laughs> I could see it in her eyes, right? And I could have, or she could have chosen in that moment to not wear a seatbelt, to not wear, as if a seatbelt in an airplane is going to do you any good. The only time a seatbelt is going to do you any good in an airplane is with turbulence, right? And that is what I want to use this analogy for in life, right? We must wear a seatbelt... Because when the bumps of life come, and they will, they're going to keep you in your seat. They're going to keep you safe. You might not feel safe, but you will be safe. Is this making sense? Okay. And the reality is, is planes don't go down from turbulence. Right? It might feel that way, but it, it, they just don't. They're made to deal with all that kind of stress. Okay? So you don't need to wear a seatbelt, but man, it sure helps. Okay, and it's the same thing in life. You can, in regards to you must love the Lord your God, right? Well, you could try to live life without loving God, without the must part, making it an uh, important thing of your life. But when the storms of life come, it's going to get a little bumpy. Okay, making sense? All right, love the Lord. That was the next thing that was highlighted to me. Love the Lord. What does this mean? Love the one that is over you. This is a scary thing for a lot of people these days because in this political movement, we're fighting for equality, and it's really not even equality. It's just something different, but we'll just say it's equality. We're fighting for these things, and the reality is, is if you love someone, you're placing yourself under them. I want you to hear what I said. When you love somebody, you're placing yourself under them. And this is even tricky when you start talking about marriages because the husband is the head of the household. Ladies, don't get mad at scripture, right? The husband is head of the household, but again, being submitted to love places me under my wife. And as my wife is submitted to me, she is under me. And if you're a math person, two negatives make a positive, which would make us equal. 
Woo. I don't even know what I just said. That was the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that was all. I can't. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't even know if that was actually right, but it sure sounded good. <laughs> Is there any smart people? Is that right? Sweet. At least, yeah. <laughs> the point is, is love, right? That word, love the Lord. Love the one you've given your very life to. Like when we come over here, you're receiving Christ Jesus here at Revolution Church. You know, we, there's really no salvation prayer in the Bible. It always cracks me up that people are like, did you pray the salvation prayer? There really isn't one in the Bible, so we just made up our own. And, and it says this, dear God, I need you. I'm humbly calling out to you. I'm tired of doing things my way. Help me start doing things your way. I invite you into my life to be my Lord and Savior. Fill the emptiness in me with your Holy Spirit. Make me whole. Lord, help me to trust you. Help me to love you. Help me to live life for you. Help me to understand your grace, your mercy, your peace. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Right? And so the, the salvation prayer is a great thing to kind of articulate what our heart is feeling and the thing is, is when, when we did this, we placed ourselves under God's authority. We said, my life is no longer my own. I mean, just in this, I'm, I need you. I'm humbly calling out to you. I'm tired of doing things my way. I want to start doing things your way. I invite you into my life to be my Lord and Savior. That means I am submitting my life to you. I am coming under you. Right? So I must place my life under your authority. Okay? Is this making sense? I'm going to be asking that a lot today because I really want it to. This is the place where we've put our faith. This is where we put our, our, our time in, our money in. This is where we bring our friends to. This is where we do life. This is, this is like right? This, we we got to do that. We must do this. Because why? We're submitted to this. And submission is a beautiful thing. It's not twisted like our current world will talk to you about submission and this and that, and we get into all this gender stuff of being submitted to one another. This, this is a beautiful, holy thing being submitted not only to God, but to one another. Okay? All right. Whew. So love the Lord, the one over you, the one who holds you, the one that you've willy, willingly given your life over to, the one you place your faith in. Loving the Lord is where you get to walk out your faith with fear and trembling. Just because you love the Lord doesn't mean you have it all figured out. Just because you understand, I must love the Lord you got those two things down, does not mean that you have it all figured out, okay? Paul talks about walking out your, your, your salvation with fear and trembling. It's actually in Philippians 2.12. If we just can put that up on the screen, that would be great. Philippians 2.12. And if you actually pause the announcements, the screen will actually go black, and it will get rid of the white background. You might have to exit out and go back in. It's a new thing with the update. It's just kind of weird. Anyway, so Philippians 2.12. So th this, uh, the book of Philippians was wit written by Paul and Timothy. Okay, And so here we have the Apostle Paul saying this. Dear friends, you always followed my instructions when I was with you. And now that I am away, it is even more critical. There, there's something to be said here. We'll, look, we'll talk about that in a second. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with deep reverence and fear. Some translations say with fear and trembling. Okay? And in Corinthians, Paul talks about this again. I was, I, when I was with you, I was with you in, in prayers and supplication and fear and trembling. And so the point is, is, is we need to be hanging out and, and working this stuff out daily. Okay? And Paul, Paul actually hits something here. I was with you, 
And now that I am away, it is even more critical. He's saying that it is important for you to be submitted to God and be to be living a godly life, not just when you're at church, but when you're away from Paul, when you're away from Timothy, when you're away from your pastors. What often happens, this isn't a judgment thing, this is just reality, because I used to be in this place before I was a pastor. Man, I was at church, I had my, hey, yeah, yeah. and then I'd go to work, and I'd be like, blah, 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 blah. and it was, I had two different lives. This is exactly what Paul's talking about. Great, we're, we're doing awesome here, and we get it, we must love, and, and everyone, amen, and this and that. He goes, but it's even more critical when you're not at church. It's even more critical when you're not in the presence of ones that you're worried about seeing you. Okay? All right. So now let's go to the next thing that was highlighted to me. With all. With all. Can you guys repeat after me? Holos. 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 It's a Greek word. It means whole, complete, everything, all. H-O-L. Hyphen OS. Holos. So it means with everything that you have. Let's, let's use this in a dating analogy. And it goes either way for guys meeting girls, girls meeting guys. You meet the one. And man, you're willing to be like, well, you know, I'll do anything to get her. I'll, I'll do anything to make sure that she knows I'm a cool guy and she wants to hang out with me. I will give her my bank account. I will give her my time. I will give her my attention. Oh, she needs clothes. I'm going to buy her clothes. You know what? Her car kind of, oh, it's not so good. I'm going to do a tune-up on that thing. And you do a tune-up and you're like, man, it's just not really good. She just needs a new car. And you're just dating. But you're just like, oh, with all, you are all in. Does this relate? Anyone like, or is that just me? Man, when I met Ronnie, I was like, dude, I am sold. No, I actually got your car. I was like, I was, I was, I did something right there. So <laughs> I don't know how that worked out. But anyway, but when I met her, I was all in. I was like, man, I, I am fully submitted to this relationship. This is going to be super cool. And I literally would do anything for her. Right? Whole, entire, complete. I've said this before. God does not want part-time custody of his kids. Amen. He doesn't want you just on Sunday. He doesn't want you one day a week. He did not build you to just have visitation one day a week. Or two days a week when there's a worship night or a potluck. <sighs> oh man, last night at CR we had uh, our second, this, uh, we had our Thanksgiving potluck a couple weeks ago at church. And then last night we had a th uh, Thanksgiving meal. Um, Deb and Betty just were amazing and cooked us an awesome meal. Deb totally loves recognition. She's totally like, if lasers could come out of her eye right now. She's taking notes. Yeah. Anyway, it was great, right? It was a packed house. It was really good. God doesn't want part-time custody. He wants us all. He wants all of us. I mean, let's think about it, and, and a lot of this is relationship-based, so if you're not in a relationship, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to, you know, it's just, it's really easy analogies. So how do you think Ronnie and I's marriage would go, like in the very beginning of her and I started dating, and I'm like, woo, she's amazing, and she's like, hey, I really like you, but um, this is amazing, and I want holos from you, I want access to your bank account and everything, but... I just, I just want to hang out one day a week <laughs> for like two hours. <laughs> we put a ring on it, right? 
How do you think that relationship would go if, if we were like, if I'm like given my whole self, right? And she's like, well, I'll give two hours of my time to you a week. But I still want full access to everything you got. Good luck, buddy. Okay, so we're all kind of getting it. All right, now here's the gut punch. This is what we do with God. Uh, people are talking. They didn't hear it. This is what we do with God. God, I want all of you. Church is over, or they're like, man, is he done yet? Right? <laughs> Worship was a whole 35 minutes today. Whew. <sighs> Buffet is calling my name, right? We get, we get so worried about this stuff. We, we say holos, but we don't actually give holos. And this is demonstrated by what we're willing to do for God, what we're willing to give God. Uh, of, and this, this is your time, talent, treasure. This is like the full meal deal, right? God wants it all. It's all his. He's given me every single thing. When I, when I finally realized that he has literally given me every single thing I have, even the stuff that is just totally geeky, unnecessary, purely for my pleasure, little RC car. God has given me my, my RC car, right? He's given me my cars to work on, the tools to work on my cars, right? Everything, my, my guitars, everything has R's in it. Right, but uh, this is all stuff that my kids, my house, the church, the ministry, this is all stuff that he has just blessed me with because I gave him holos. I said, I'm all in. I'm going to put all the chips in. I'm ready. Let's do this. Right? And, and it's not, wow, Jason, you're cool. I'm just giving you just an example of being all in. For those of you that have known me for 20 plus years, man, I am not the same person I was 20 years ago. I am not the same man I was 10 years ago. I'm not the same man I was five years ago. My wife's like, mm -hmm. right? But it's being open to a transformation and part of Matthew 22, all right? So with all, your heart, let's talk about that one. Why is that jumping off the page to me? Your heart is significant. Your heart is, this is what I call like in, in my Proverbs Bible study that I've been taking a break from, uh, but I call this the lockbox of your life. It is like your jewelry box, right? We place people and memories and, and things in our heart and we stuff them in there and we keep them safe because it's like, oh, he has my heart. He just has my heart, right? Or she has my heart. Right, And we place our kids in there and pictures and family vacations. It's just this little lockbox of our heart. God wants full access to your lockbox. Okay? Does that make sense? Yeah. Are we giving him full access? Or are we just saying that you can only have, you know, you got a terabyte of storage, but you only want to give him one gig? What does it mean? It's a measurement of volume in the digital age. Ooh, oh, man. <laughs> I don't know. We had, what did we have? Oh, I had, I had uh, vegetable pie for breakfast this morning. Because cause pumpkin is a vegetable. Yeah. Everyone's like, ew, why did you? That's gross. I had pumpkin pie for breakfast. It was amazing. Yeah. If you have pumpkin pie before you pray for a couple of hours, I'm telling you guys, amazing stuff will happen. Okay, I got to get back on track here. So the heart is a significant thing. It is a place where we place our valuables. God, 
You, you, you have acknowledged that he's valuable. Now he wants to pour himself out into your heart. You're not going to lose any of your space, your pictures, your memories, all this stuff. It all gets to stay there. It's just like he just enhances it. Everything gets better. He takes it all, but doesn't take any of the space. It's an interesting thing. I remember Caprice, when she was a little girl, she was like, Dad, I do not want to give my full life to Jesus. I want to hang out. It was very similar. Cherie was up here last week, and she literally shared how she told God. She was in the, having this moment with God, and she was like, I'm too young. I'm, I'll be back later when I'm older, right? Do you guys remember that? Yeah. And it didn't work out so well for her, right? And we've all done those kind of things where it's like, Man, he just wants all of us. But Caprice had this fear that if she gave her life to the Lord, that she would be this robot that would just, you know, be doing the will of the Lord and never get to do anything that she wanted to do. The interesting thing, guys, is as we give our life holos to the Lord, you get so much more than you ever dreamed of. It's the truth. It's scary to give over control and be submitted but submission is beautiful. It's a process. Okay? So now, taking this revelation, you know, expanding on, on Matthew 22. Now let's paraphrase Matthew 22 with everything we just discussed. Okay? You guys ready? Yeah. All right, so I'm going to read it just so I don't mess it up because I worked on this last night. So this is a paraphrase of Matthew 22. So let's read it regular real quick. Let me scroll up here so I'm in the same translation. Matthew 22, 37, Jesus replied, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind. Okay? So let's paraphrase that with everything that we just talked about. To grow into what God has for us, we must fight to maintain the relationship even when we don't want to. Giving him full access to the jewelry box of my life, which is my heart. So that he may polish the treasures that he blessed me with, that I would be strong and passionate in and out of his presence. What does that look like for me practically? Oh, man. Think of something that you're not really excited to do. But, man, you just love somebody and you just end up doing it anyway. Can you guys think of any scenarios where it's like, man, it's really not my favorite, but my sister likes it or my girlfriend, whatever, so I just try to make her happy. Can you guys think of situations? Oh, yeah. yeah? Ronnie really likes to look at homes and, and specifically uh, modular homes. And I'm like, well, we have a house, but she, and we're not like in the market to buy another house, but she really likes looking at houses. She likes seeing the floor plans and this and that. And honestly, I don't do it as much as I should. But when I do take her, I get really blessed because she just gets all excited and she's like, oh, this could go there. And she gets to play interior decorator. It is not my favorite thing. But I go, when we do, I go because I know it just brings her joy. Does that make sense? Can you think of things that you do for somebody because it brings them joy and you love to see them happy? That's called submission. If we say that we love God with all of our heart, with all of our strength, all our mind, soul, spirit, right? What are the things that make him happy? He loves to see a cheerful giver. Oh, he's not getting my $10. I know what that pastor does with his money, right? <laughs> right? That's not a cheerful giver. He wants us to be cheerful. So we give because it makes him excited. Not because we're going to get anything. It's just that we know he loves submission and obedience. Therefore, we walk and we move through that. We go look at modular homes, even when we're not in the market for modular homes. We go to craft stores and we look. We sit on the couch and we watch Dr. Phil. Anytime I'm on the couch watching Dr. Phil, it's because I love my wife. 
She watches him every day, and she's like, do you want to watch Dr. Phil with me? And I'm like, yeah, I do because I love you, and I will sit here. She has this new show. Uh, what is this new show? The, uh, the Masked Singer or something. Oh, there we go. Everyone knowing that one. I can't stand that. It's like, come on. I don't watch a lot of TV. But guess what? I sit there and I try to guess and figure out who's who. Why? Because I love my wife. Let's take that same analogy and translate it into our life living for Jesus. What are we willing to do? Are we willing to go after church and go cut down a Christmas tree when it's our only day off? When we're tired? When we've been up since 4 o'clock this morning? What are we willing to do, right? Or are we willing to give and sow into the ministry that it could be a blessing to others, that the church might have money to pay rent and utilities and that kind of stuff for other people that are needy in our community? Right? Let's, th- this is the kingdom. This is, this is what it is. This is what it's all about. And in that, we have this massive growth that takes place from right here. Because we did, we gave him holos. All right? Making sense? All right, we're going to close really quick. You guys are doing awesome. As I was uh, putting the finishing touches on this last night, I was praying. And something that popped in my head that I'm just going to be truthful here. Uh, I mean, I'm truthful in everything, but I'm going to be even more vulnerable, as Caleb says. Um, I haven't been doing this daily, uh, but there, there was a season recently where I had this revelation regarding my marriage and how to make it better. Because the reality is, is we could all use a better marriage. I don't care how good your marriage is, it can always get better. Amen? Right, But the revelation was, I need to wake up every single morning as if it was the first day. Man, that first day that we got married, the first night I got to spend with her. And that morning I woke up, I was like, dude, I'll do anything. (laughs) I'll do anything at all. (laughs) I'm totally sold out. (laughs) Right? My grace tank was so, could you, could you, you want to watch Dr. Phil? Oh, you bet. Well, let's, let's watch the whole season, right? <laughs> right? Will you, will you do the dishes? Oh, yeah, I'll do the dishes, right? That first day, I was so willing to do anything. And so just this thought uh, popped in my head last night as I was praying Let's, let's live every single day as if it is the first day that you receive Jesus Christ. Right? So that, that works if you just received Jesus five days ago. That works if you received Jesus 20 years ago. Go back to that first day. Some of you, it was when you got delivered from cancer. Some of you, it was when you got delivered from uh, drugs or alcohol or a really bad situation. Some of you, you were into witchcraft and you were like, you were like finally figured out that demons were out to kill you, right? They're not out to bless your life and give you guidance and, and this type of stuff. And you, real, you realize what God had saved you from. And in that moment, you were like, I will do anything. Let's live every day as if it's the first day. See, the world says, let's live every day as if it's the last. No. Let's live every day as if it's the first day. Today is the day of salvation. What has God done for you today? He's always doing something. And if your answer is nothing or I don't know, you are not paying attention. (laughs) you're just not he's doing stuff for you all the time
So let's live as, as if it's the first day. Why don't you guys stand up? We're going to pray. You guys doing all right? Yep. Mm. Jesus, more. So um, we're going to pray really quick, and then in a moment we'll have prayer servants come forward. And once prayer servants come forward, if there's anyone that has any physical pain, any breakthrough uh, that's required, that you need, uh, for those of you that were desperate, that you need breakthrough, man, come up. It's a time where we can dive into things just a little bit more. If your neck is still hurting, if your leg's still hurting, or something else that we didn't call out, man, come forward. Let us pray for you, okay? So let's just do a general prayer real quick, and then we'll invite the prayer team to come up. So Father God, I just thank you so much for learning how to love you, the revelation that is literally right there in Scripture, where I thank you that you make it easy. God, I just ask that you would just release the revelation of the first day. Lord, that you would call to our memory, if we can't remember, if you would call to our memory, memory what you did for us the day that we received you as our Lord and Savior. What were we headed for? God, whether that was 20 years ago, five days ago, whatever, I, I just ask that you would release the memories of what you've done for us that we might be able to live every single day as if it's the first day. And I thank you for your presence. I thank you that it brings us into joy. I thank you. You are so good. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I was just thinking about this song. I want to give you all that's inside of my heart. Uh, you guys remember that song? Yeah. Where, where's Jake at? Where, did he leave already? All right. Anyway, don't worry about it. It's fine. So, Oh, he's in the sound booth. Anyway, maybe we'll do that song sometime soon. But that, that's holos. Okay? All right. So we're going to have prayer servants come forward. If uh, we can have prayer servants come forward, and if you need prayer for anything whatsoever, we would just love to pray with you. We just bless you guys in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We'll see you guys very soon.